You know, obviously, guys, we're, uh, we're really excited to get kicked off today. Uh, we've had an outstanding last couple of weeks of individual work. Um, I feel like our team has worked really, really hard uh, since the end of August, and, and there's been so many hoops that we've had to jump through in terms of, you know, not presently having a field to go on each and every day. Um, but our guys have been extremely diligent getting their work done each and every day in the Palmero Center. Um, football has been very uh, extremely kind to us and allowed us to get our defensive work done on football field practice number four. Uh, so we've been able to get our infield work done out there, throw down bases in the end zone, let's go play ball, you know. So uh, the last couple of weeks we've been doing a lot of hitter versus pitcher simulation game stuff out on the softball intramural field. Um, so it, it's been pretty interesting to say the least. Uh, but at the same time, extremely proud of the work that our guys have done. Um, you know, one of the things that we continue to preach all the time here in this program is that each and every day is an opportunity to win a job. And it's a lot of the same things that we continue to talk about this, this fall that we talked about last spring is that every single day you put your uniform on and represent this MORS that's on our jersey and on our hat is an opportunity to uh, you're representing all the, the past greats here at Mississippi State, and you're representing all the people that have come before you that have put this program on the national pedestal where it is right now. So um, our guys have worked extremely hard to continue to represent the past, and we know we have a lot of work to do here in the next couple of weeks for fall practice that gets started today. Um, I'm extremely excited. Our staff is extremely excited. I think our players are beyond excited to do something new. Um, in terms of uh, us being able to get on the new Duty Noble field today for the very first time. Um, it'll be a very, um, very limited basis that we'll be able to get on the field, but we, have, we will be able to get our defensive work done. Infielders will be able to take ground balls. Outfielders will be able to take fly balls. Um, obviously, we, we have to be very careful. There are construction fences that basically run from home plate all the way down to the foul lines. Uh, there's no padding on the walls just yet. There's brick walls in right field and down the sides that do not currently have padding on them. Um, but at the same time, I, I just, I don't think it, it would matter to our guys at all. I think we're just so excited to get outside. I think we're so excited to get this fall started. Um, and we're just ready to go out and, and compete for jobs and show, I think our players are excited to show our coaching staff who's ready to play and who's ready to show this year's fan base um, that we can continue to build on the things that we did last year. So, extremely jacked up, ready to get rolling. Slept in my uni last night, guys. Is there a challenge to kind of establishing the routine through all the construction to make sure everything's consistent and that they can get Yeah, that's, good, that's a great question. And, and, and I've been very, uh, you know, have just continued to tell our players all along the first couple of weeks in fall practice, there's going to be some trial and error in terms of, you know, having a certain practice plan scheduled for each day and, you know, maybe we're running behind schedule because our team has to get escorted onto the field at the same time and we have to get escorted off the field at the same time because everything going on around the actual playing surface is a construction zone. So we can't come and go as often as we want. We have to take the field as a team and exit as a team. So um, there'll certainly be some trial and error to those first couple of weeks, but um, I just think it's something that, it, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter where we're practicing right now. Our guys know that each and every day is an opportunity to win a job, impress the coaching staff, and get ourselves ready to play for this upcoming season. Based on what happened last year, I'd imagine building pitching depth is a pretty big priority for this fall. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I think it's going to, it feels really good to be able to look down a roster right now and just be able to envision who's going to be healthy this year, what roles those guys could potentially fit in for us. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would be lying if I didn't say that I wasn't extremely excited for us to have more depth on the mound this year. Um, and just to, to touch on last year, um, you know, guys, our pitching coach, Gary Henderson, did an incredible job last year with the arms that we had available due to the health issues on our team last year. So he did a magnificent job in aligning those guys, finding roles for all those guys, trying to just mix and match as much as possible to allow our team to have success. And, and, and Gary did a fantastic job with that. And I know he's extremely excited to have a deeper uh, lineup of arms so far this year. Would there be anybody that's kind of limited in the fall or is there a pretty much full goal? Yeah, no, there'll certainly be some limited guys. You know, we have so many guys that are coming back from injury. Um, you know, we have several guys 
you know, coming back from either elbow surgery or shoulder surgery. All those guys are at different points in their rehab right now. Um, we have several guys, guys like Ethan Small, um, guys like, um, gosh, Noah Hughes, uh, one or two other guys that will be good to go right now at the start of fall practice. We have several other guys, Keegan James, Blake Smith, guys that are a little bit further behind in their Tommy John recovery. Uh, those guys are throwing right now, throwing flat grounds, that type of thing. So I would look for those guys to kind of be available maybe towards the back end of fall practice, but certainly available to us come January when we get those four weeks before the season starts, before opening pitch. What does the uh, infield look like as far as uh, defense is concerned? What is competing for what position? Yeah, you know, guys, that's obviously, you know, when you lose a guy like Ryan Gridley that played every inning of every game at shortstop last year. Uh, first team All-SEC shortstop last season, had an incredible year. Um, there is a hole at shortstop right now, and we have two veteran guys that have been competing their absolute butts off every single day for that position so far during individuals, and that's junior uh, third baseman from last year, Luke Alexander, and junior second baseman from last year, Hunter Stowall. So, both of those guys have been working every single day at shortstop. Um, we're going to give both of those guys every single opportunity to go out there and win that job at shortstop. Both of those guys have continued to get better um, over the course of the summer um, and continue to get better over the course of the first couple weeks of the fall for us so far. So um, we feel like we have two really good options. I'm really excited about both of those guys. Uh, Luke Alexander came back from the Cape Cod League where he had a really impressive summer. Um, Luke lost about 10 or 12 pounds from last baseball season. He's moving better. There's more lateral range. You know, he's already a plus defender at third base, and now with a little more um, agility, his feet have gotten a little bit better over the course of the summer and the fall. And a lot of that has to do with our strength and conditioning coach, Brian Neal, who's done a great job with our guys in terms of the agility work that they do each and every day. And Luke has really bought into that part of trying to play shortstop for us. So he's had an incredible first couple of weeks of that individual schedule for us. Um, and Hunter Stovall continues to get better and better over there. You know, he's a guy that plays a tremendous second base. He turns a double play at second base probably better than anybody in the country right now. Um, but he's a guy that can really pick it at shortstop. We've really started working on getting his arm up every single time from short, just because it is a longer throw from shortstop than it is from second base. Um, both of those guys are going to compete every single day this entire fall. We'll split both of those guys up on, on scrimmage days. Um, they will both work at shortstop each and every day, and they're just going to absolutely compete, get after it, and, and we're going to feel very comfortable that one of those two guys will be able to will be able to go over there and play shortstop for us this year. And what about at second if Stonewall wins the shortstop? Yeah, I mean, the, the, we have options, guys. You know, we have several <laughs> freshmen that have been outstanding for us so far. In the early parts of the fall, um, freshman uh, from Huntsville, Alabama, Justin Foscu, has had an outstanding first couple of weeks for us. He's a big, physical, strong kid uh, with a lot of power and a right-handed bat. Um, hands really work. Um, he's a guy that we feel comfortable that could play some second base. Um, another freshman from Mobile, Alabama, Tanner Allen, has been working at second base each and every day for us. He is a high school outfielder by nature. Uh, but we've been working him out at second base every day over the first five or six weeks. He's continued to get better and better each and every day and has made a lot of really big strides from the end of August to where we are today. So both of those guys will work out at second base. Another freshman, Jordan Westberg, has been really good for us. Jordan is six foot two, really athletic kid, has already shown us the ability to play all four infield positions. So I absolutely love his versatility so far. I feel really comfortable in him being able to handle his glove, being able to make throws from all the different angles. So those three young guys have been outstanding for us. Um, and so I just think we're just going to continue to get out there and compete. Those guys are going to have the next six weeks of getting after it every single day. Uh, and we feel really good about where we're going to be at the end of the fall with those parts and pieces that we have. What about catcher? Level a, how does it yeah, gosh, you know, it, when you start to look at last year's team, um, you know, I don't even look at the batting average part of it. You know, when you look at a guy like Lovelady, he was incredible for us. He was an absolute leader, terrific clubhouse guy. He did a great job last year handling a really young staff. Um, and so his leadership, his ability to block the baseball, those things are really going to be missed for us this year. 
We've got two guys that are going to compete each and every day for that spot. Sophomore returner, Dustin Skelton. Um, he's a guy that was an all-star this summer in his collegiate summer league. He's come in this year, and he and a junior college transfer, Marshall Gilbert from the Midwest, who was a summer all-star as well. Both of those guys are going to compete each and every day. Both of those guys are right-handed hitters. Uh, both are big, strong, physical kids. So uh, one of those two guys is going to be our starting catcher. We'll have a much better idea about that position at the end of fall practice, but both of those guys have been working extremely hard for us so far this year. How valuable will it be for you to have a full fall for evaluation? I'm really excited about it. You know, last year uh, it was kind of show up at the end of November, you know, practice in January, play ball in the middle of February. So we did a lot of things last year on the fly. So I'm really excited to see our guys out on the field each and every day for a full fall practice like you talked about. Um, just being able to continue to teach the game the way that I want us to play it. In terms of just being able to spend time with our base runners, being able to help guys steal bases, being able to help infielders, do those kind of things and be in a more teacher type of role uh, than last year when that month of January was strictly an evaluation period for us and trying to find the guys that we could fit out on the field by opening day that we felt could help us win ball games. And then obviously as the season progressed, you know, that lineup was able to change several different times. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter where you start the season position wise or where you start fall practice wise, guys are gonna get the opportunity to win jobs. And that's what the next couple of weeks are gonna allow us to do. Teach, evaluate, see where we are at the middle of November when fall practice ends be able to regroup, come back in January and have that month before the season so we can put the absolute very best product out on the field that we possibly can by the time it's open night and we play at the University of Southern Mississippi. Brent Rooker was a guy that kind of made a huge jump from his freshman year, sophomore year, of course, sophomore and junior year. Yep. But is there anybody, maybe McNamee or Vance Austin, that you anticipate, maybe not to the Rooker level league, right. there, to make that offensive leap this year? Dude, those are two awesome names, man. I got all these notes, man, and these are two of the guys I wanted to highlight. Um, both of those guys, the work that they've done in the first four or five weeks of individual sessions has been phenomenal. Both of those guys went off to summer collegiate leagues, were all-stars. Dan saw one off and hit eight home runs this summer. He came back 12 pounds heavier. He's thicker, he's stronger, really driving the baseball better today than he did at any point last season. Um, and so, so many people have asked me, Andy, dude, how are you gonna replace Brett Rooker? First thing I say is, you don't, you know? So you're talking about a guy that did something last year where he won the Triple Crown in the SEC for the first time in 30 years. It's been 30 years since somebody did what he did in this league. So it'd be crazy for me to think that we can get one person to fill the shoes of Brent Rooker, what he did last year. But I do feel that we've got three or four different returning guys that I think are primed to have outstanding junior seasons for us. And two of those guys you mentioned, Van Saw and McNamee. Now, one of the things I kind of wanted to talk about today um, is, is Elijah McNamee, okay? Swing has been outstanding. His work in the outfield has been great the first couple of weeks. What we're gonna do this fall um, is we're gonna spend the next four or five, six weeks of fall practice with Elijah McNamee learning how to play first base. Um, we feel that with his athleticism, his lateral movement, that type of thing. Uh, we feel like he can do what Brett Rooker did for us last year where we took Rooker from the outfield, moved him to first base, and pretty much didn't have any time to coach or teach him. It was just a mass reps type of thing for Rooker. And then obviously by the end of the year, he played first base for us at a very high level, ultimately winning the ball game on a play down the line against, um, at school up north, right? Um, when we were able to beat those guys. but. We feel like a guy like McNamee, he's already been working over there for the last week. Um, his feet are really good, his hands work. He's really bought into trying to learn how to play first base. His first week on the job has been pretty good. And so we just feel like if we can help McNamee play first base, right, then we feel like we can get our very best bats in the lineup. And we've got an entire fall to work with Mac. We've got an entire January to work with Mac as well. And then all of a sudden now you can start creating some depth on your team where you've got a guy like McNamee that can play first, you've got a Mangum in the outfield, you've got Vance on the outfield, you've got a freshman Tanner Allen that can really, really swing it 
and has been very impressive with the bat so far. That was a high school outfielder that we know can go back out to the outfield and play as well. Then you've got a guy like Tanner Poole, who's made tremendous strides offensively in the first month and a half that we've been able to work with him. Making some adjustments with Tanner where we've stood him more upright in the box, allowing him to hit like he's six foot four, eliminating some of the bending over in his swing, just trying to help him repeat his swing, and he's been outstanding for us so far. So we feel like we've got four or five or six different guys in the outfield that can really play. And on our team right now, we feel like the depth in our outfield is probably the greatest that we have on our team at any one spot. So we want to take the next couple of weeks, see if we can work Matt and me at first base, see if he can grab onto that position, and then see how that's going to work out because I feel like he's really primed to have an outstanding junior season. He had a terrific year last year. He was really good down the stretch for us. And then on top of that, we've got a junior college uh, transfer, Alex Penner, that's been working at first base as well. That was a really good junior college hitter, hit some home runs, that type of thing. So we're really excited about the fall, looking forward to a lot of great competition. Like you said, this is your first full fall, and you mentioned Brian Neal. What was the approach with him in terms of you know what you had him doing with the guys all fall? Yep. They've been talking about how tough it is. Yeah, you know, one of the things that, that I wanted to do, and, and guys, I'm a really big believer in the strength and conditioning part of your program. And so what I wanted to do was I sat down with Brian immediately after the season ended last year. I told him my ideas for this fall. And basically, even if our stadium wasn't being built, I was going to take fall practice and back it up as far as possible, okay? I wanted to allow Brian to have seven full weeks in the weight room with our staff, I mean with our players, in terms of a full seven-week strength building cycle to get our guys as big and as strong as they possibly can. And so we've made some tremendous strides in the weight room. I basically went to Brian, sat down and said, dude, you have carte blanche to do what you want to do with our guys in the weight room. And I told him I wanted to build our fall very much like Coach Savage does with the football players in the summertime. I wanted our players this fall to spend that time getting bigger, stronger, and faster, not worrying about, okay, we've got practice today at 3 o'clock, we're going to be on the field from 3 to 6.30, then we've got to get our workout in, because then by the time you're on the field for three and a half hours, your workout is just a matter of trying to get it in, and you're not necessarily gaining in the weight room like I wanted it to. So. We've absolutely got after it, man. He has absolutely um, gotten our guys stronger. Our guys are running really well, filling out their jerseys really nice right now. A lot of the things that I like to see, and so um, wanted to give Coach, Coach Neal a lot of props for the work that he's done with our guys this fall. Our guys have really liked it. They've bought into it. They've gotten bigger and stronger so far, and we're going to continue to do it that whole time through fall practice. We're not going to take our foot off the gas at all with that.